following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This, this is Mick Shots. Streaming live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Now, here are Bill Jones, Everson Walls, and Mickey Spagnola. And here it is. It's a fabulous football Friday edition of Mick Shots Cowboys and the Minnesota Vikings on Sunday afternoon as the Cowboys hit the road. And we're here to prepare you all for it. Bill Jones, along with Everson Walls and Mickey Spagnola inside the SWBC Mortgage Studios at Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. And how are we doing on this very fine football Friday? Let's start with you, Everson. How are you doing? I am doing just fine. I'm glad we're in this wonderful weather. Anytime you think of the Vikings, you always think of old Minneapolis, what is it? Uh, was it Metro Stadium? Metropolitan Stadium. Metropolitan in Stadium. Minnesota. That's right. Outdoors. They didn't have turf. It was grass. Could you imagine in December what that grass would have felt? Oh, I'm sorry, the frozen dirt would have felt like playing <laughs> against the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> That's right. They did, of course, the Metro Dome, and now they've got a sparkling, uh, relatively new stadium up there, which Mickey, Spag- Mickey Spagnola, you've been in all of the stadiums that they've played Vikings games, right? I don't think so. <laughs> Why not? I, don't, I wasn't there when they had the, the benches on the same side of the field. Oh, okay. That's right. old school now, stuff. Was, was it that Metropolitan when, Stadium? Did you play in it? I, I don't believe it? Coach allowed them to wear gloves. Wait, did he let them wear gloves? You remember he was he was you know Bud was was kind of crazy. He wouldn't they yeah. they couldn't wear gloves in the game no matter how cold it was. And I think practice had the same rules, so it was. Pretty tough playing for the Vikings back then. You had to be a man's man. <laughs> <laughs> Mind over matter. Were they, yeah, yeah, buddy. Were man. they in the dome by the time you got there? Yeah, thank God. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they were in the dome. <laughs> I probably would have played. I probably would have been injured for like the first time in my career if I would have had to go up to play in that uh, old Metro Dome, frozen dirt. Fro- yeah. That's frozen tundra. Forget Green Bay. Frozen tundra. Is, is, is Minnesota. Minneapolis, yeah, You didn't miss Minnesota. it by much, though. Not much. Uh, the Hail Mary was at uh, Metropolitan Stadium. It was out The Hail Mary was on my 16th birthday, which I always, I never fail to point out. So I, I have been a part of cowboy lore even when I was, my voice was still changing. <laughs> All right, I'm looking up about the old Met. And uh, now, it was I, was... I was old enough to watch games on television from there. With Ray Scott calling the games? Yes, absolutely. My favorite guy. Yep. He did, there you he go. did the Packers They games. broke ground in 1955 on Metropolitan Stadium. It opened in 1956. It closed... December 20th, 1981. So, Everson, you really did just miss it. Ooh, thank goodness we didn't have to play that division. <laughs> my rookie <laughs> year, I think the coldest game my rookie year uh, could have been in Indianapolis. I know it was a really ugly game in Indianapolis. Uh, Curtis Dickey, Texas A&M running back. Yep was the starting running back for the, Col- the, the Baltimore Colts, I'm sorry, at that time. Mm-hmm. And we ended up uh, playing in New Jersey last game of the season. We did not need that game. The Giants needed that game to make the playoffs. It was the last game of the season, and we couldn't wait to get the heck out of there. I think it was the wind chill had to be around 20-something Beautiful day. Snow was, was all on the sideline. No precipitation. But uh, it was about 20 degrees wind chill. And we went into overtime. Come on. What is going on here? We didn't even need the game. And we went into overtime. That was the worst. I'm not going to lie. I could care less who won that game. But the Giants did win in overtime. And, and they ended up playing San Francisco, I believe. 
uh, in that first round. <laughs> so, Bill, where did funny where did, you mention Kurt? Where did the Vikings play? Before, you go ahead, Mickey. Where did the Vikings play before they went into Metropolitan Stadium? Or who was playing in there when they opened it? Uh, you said fifty six. Fifty six. Well, I gotta go back now. Let me I find it. Hold on it. a second. I thought you probably had it. Still I did, because... and I moved on. I moved on to Curtis Dickey. <laughs> <laughs> when he mentioned Curtis Dickey. I moved... <laughs> Because it, it's funny you mentioned Curtis Dickey. I almost mentioned him the other day when you were talking about Herky and being a sprinter. You know, yeah. Curtis Curtis Dickey was a great sprinter, and uh, and I'm in fact I would wouldn't be surprised if Herky Walls and Curtis Dickey matched up together in high it school. Was, it was like this: Herky was down here running, uh-huh. Curtis was way up here. Yeah, I remember it was watching like watching David and Goliath compete for the hundred hundred at that time, the hundred yard dash. I, I remember going to the regional track meet at uh, Fouts Field in Denton and watching uh, Curtis Dickey run, and Herky might have been in that same race. I'm pretty sure he was. Pretty yeah. sure. All right, was. to answer your question, Mickey, yes. on Metropolitan Stadium, Bloomington, Minnesota, the Minos- Minneapolis Millers minor league baseball team played at the what? Met. <laughs> Starting in 1956 to 1960, the Twins moved from Washington. The Senators moved from Washington right. to Minnesota to become the Twins. And then they got a, their, another franchise, which became the Rangers <laughs> after that. <laughs> so they, the Twins played there starting in 1961, and the and the Vikings uh, also in started 61. in 1961. Because they were the second. Yeah. So there you go. The, they were the second expansion team. The Cowboys were the first, and they came the next year. And they gave Minnesota uh, the franchise – uh, early enough for them to participate in that 61 draft that was in December of 1960. So they got the first pick where the Cowboys got no Who picks. Who was that, Bill? Oh, you know what? I just looked at that yesterday, and now I forgot. Um, what was that? Oh, man. The, what was the, the question? Viking, the Vikings had the first pick in the 61 draft. And he wanted to know who it was. Oh, who was that? <laughs> yeah, and and the Cowboys had traded away Mick Tinglehoff. No, I'm not. Well, maybe. <laughs> uh, I don't know. The Cowboys had traded away. Who'd they would have had who the, was it? the Cowboys would have had the second pick, but they traded it away the year before to get Eddie LeBaron from the Redskins to play quarterback because they didn't have Meredith just yet. Uh, so they ended up with the 13th pick in that 61 draft because they traded their first round pick in 62 to Cleveland to get their first round pick in 61 and it ended up being Bob Lilly. Wow. With the 13th pick Bob in Lilly, the first round. 13th pick. 13th pick uh, and by the way the Vikings with the number 1 pick selected a halfback from Tulane University, Tommy Mason. Hmm. He played with him for a while. I think while. the Cowboys, Gil Brent, Gil Brent won that draft yeah. with the 13th pick <laughs> with Bob Lilly. But I think I looked it up, Bill, and there was four four Hall of Famers in that draft. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was Ditka. Mike Ditka was the fifth pick to Chicago. Jimmy Johnson, not the former Cowboy right, head the, coach, the Jimmy Johnson, back. San Francisco. That's right. And then it was a uh, Billy Kilmer? the sixth pick to San Francisco. Herb Adderley went 12th to Green Bay. Right. Bob Lilly 13th to Dallas. So there was, I just rattled off four. Ditka, Jimmy Johnson, Herb Adderley, Bob Lilly, uh, and Fran Tarkenton went in the third round. <laughs> so the Vikings waited to the third round to take one of the greatest players of all time in their history. Might be the greatest. And I don't see another one. And then I think there so was there two, you go. And there was two quarterbacks in the first round. Was it Norm Sneed and Billy Kilmer? All right, going back to the first round of the 1961 draft. Everything that you would want to know about the 1961 <laughs> hey, we're draft. Ready for Norm the Sneed was the number two pick. The number two pick was Norm Sneed to Washington. Okay. A pick acquired from the Cowboys. Okay. And the next quarterback taken was Billy Kilmer to San Francisco at number eleven. Very good. So there you go. And and, and before and now you, you start, know the rest of the Before you story. start to be a jerk, Bill. No, I did not play against Billy Kilmer. <laughs> Only Jim Hart. Okay. My feelings are still hurt from that comment. 
Only Jim Hart. <laughs> there you go. All right, uh, Mickey. Yes. Jerry talked this morning. He did. Uh, you want to go straight to Jerry, or you want to talk about uh, who's on the? Uh, well, there's no, there's a walkthrough today. You want to update? Uh, yeah, let's update. Marcus Lawrence is. Uh, it sounds Randy like Randy Gregory's uh, back. Go ahead. Uh, Gregory was back in the building today. He had missed the two days of practice with an illness, but uh, he was back in the building, so he's good to go. Demarcus Lawrence uh, is not here, but uh, Mike McCarthy said everything was pointing towards him being able to play on Sunday. So I think what happened, and, and McCarthy kind of got into it a little bit later in his conference call, is any think about this. If I sneeze and you're in the room, you're running out, right? Because we're so worried about COVID, right? I can't have like an allergy or just, you know, I smelled some black pepper or something and I sneezed. It's like, oh, no. So when you have, when they say illness, you know, you could have a sore throat or you can have a runny nose or whatever, and it could be an allergy, but they're going, oh, no, with COVID, you stay home until we, you know, you pass a couple tests. So I think that might be what happened uh, with those guys. Uh, just because the uh, you know everybody's such on alert, uh, but it sounded like both should be able to play. And the other thing uh, that I thought it was encouraging on the report, um, I was trying to you know how you on Zoom you got to kind of when you're when you're muted you got to get your hand in the air your your virtual hand to ask a yeah. question. And I was in the midst of trying to get Scott's attention to let me ask a question, and then I got <laughs> beat to the punch. But it got asked about Brandon Knight, how he looked this week, and uh, Mike said he looked uh, he looked good, uh, and that uh, he liked the way uh, he moved around. Uh, but he wasn't willing to go the next step. So if he's good enough to play, would he go in at right tackle? And he said, uh, we haven't got into that. That's down the line. Obviously, he wasn't going to say. But at least it got asked that, you know, the possibility if he's ready to go, is he a better tackle than Terrence Steele? And we talked about that yesterday. So we'll see where that goes. But at least they like the, uh, the progress he made. You know, I have to ask a question because this is such a unique situation in regards to sending people home when you have a game to play, you know, in a number of days from the moment that you're sent home. So you go home and you're isolated, I guess, self-isolation. I mean, what do you do? Do they continue to work out, right? Do they, I mean, I'm getting ready for a game next week, even though I'm at home and they've, uh, I've been emancipated. Uh, <laughs> even though they've done that, you know, once you get home, do, do they make you rest? Um, what is the what is the the order of the day uh, from the the cowboy doctors? Do I go home and get on the treadmill? You know, do I go lift? Can I still do that? What what what's the protocol for a player that's in that situation? You know, I'm not sure, but you know, in Andy Dalton's uh, interview yesterday. Uh, he talked about how, you know, when he when he was starting to feel better from the concussion protocol, and he was at home, he had started to kind of work out and do some things uh, from home, uh, and then all of a sudden, when he thought he was ready to come back in the building, the COVID-19 hit, and then he had to go through that protocol, and it was pretty interesting talking about how it wasn't just him. Uh, but his wife came down, uh, tested positive. One of his sons tested positive. So wow. he's, they got a house wow. full of positive tests. And, and, and he said, and that's when I had and to And, you back know, you off. can't take that stuff for granted, right. man. We right. just talk about positive tests like I just got a, a, a fever. You know, that's the, it can go from being very benign to something that's extremely dangerous. He said that first day it hit him pretty hard. So he had to back off uh, and then... Uh, you know, he talked about, uh, I was surprised he talked openly about how he lost his sense of smell and sense of taste uh, wow. and that the taste still hasn't come back. Uh, so he said, he said, uh, he said, I, I, I think he, he put it this way. I might as well eat healthy because I can't taste it. So there's no benefit to have something <laughs> spicy because I can't taste it. Plant based food. Yeah. yeah, I can see him having a mm. plant based burger now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is the time his wife is going to slide him that stuff that he needs to be eating as he as he gets to meet me and Bill's age. <laughs> yeah. He's only 33. He turned 33 the last weekend or the last week in October. 
But so he's, I'm sure those guys they have they have equipment to, at home that they can use, just yeah. like every you know. If I'm a, a Dalton, I'm pretty sure he's got a great workout room at home, and I would be trying to get off in there, stay in shape, so that when I come back, I'm ready to go. You know, but but you know, if you're feeling like he was feeling, if you, if if, it's, if COVID hits you like that, totally different deal as opposed to being. Contact in contact with someone who had it versus someone versus you testing positive for it. Two big differences there. Yeah, and and he looks like That's he's right. ready to go, Bill. Uh, it, is, it looks like he's practiced well. Uh, and Tyrone Crawford uh, should be ready to go too. His was contact uh, tracing that kept him at home. So, from a from a health uh, standpoint, other than Trayvon Diggs, um, you know they're they're in pretty good shape right now. Yeah, but what about the Vikings? What well, about the Vikings? You saw who popped up on their uh, injury report yesterday as a COVID reserve guy. I did not. Did you see that? No. C.J. Ham, the fullback. Oh, no. C.J. Yes, we talked about uh, throughout this week about uh, how they use the fullback and so forth. Well, yesterday, C.J. Ham popped up on their report as a COVID uh, positive, as a COVID reserve guy, not not saying he's tested positive. Okay. Well, Did guess you see what? That? Because on on the on the Wednesday uh, injury report, he did not practice, yeah. and it said not injury related. So again, there you mm. go. What happens when uh, okay. you're around somebody? It's like okay, stay home, don't practice with us. Hey, didn't the, didn't the center didn't their didn't their often their center have an issue as well? Um, Bradbury, oh, their center, had an injury. Yeah, but he he was, he was uh, limited. He was limited in practice. It's Ezra Cleveland did not participate yesterday as right. uh, starting offensive guard. Right. So uh, I would think that Drew Samia would start for him instead. Well, um, you can see how a center that's a that's a, an essential <laughs> position. I was watching the game last night. I don't know how many um, false starts uh, that uh, the Arizona t- that Arizona well, had, had a last bad night. snap too. At, yeah, I mean this this guy was uh they didn't even have a crowd there and the 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 twelfth man was still uh prevalent in that ball game. I mean they had so many false starts, it was ridiculous, and I think it was all related to the fact that they had a replacement center. So, you know, that's that's something that could you know, if I'm if I'm the Cowboys, I'm gonna try to take advantage of that if this guy's kinda injured and then you have no fullback. That kind of changes the game plan a little bit. Maybe not the game plan, but my train of thought and how I'm going to attack this offense. And uh, I'm looking at uh, uh, some updated reports on the on the Vikings. The Vikings have ruled Ezra Cleveland out of Sunday's game now, mm. and Brett Jones will actually replace him. And uh, and. Zimmer, Mike Zimmer says that fullback C.J. Ham placed Thursday on the COVID-19 reserve list could play Sunday. So that tells you he did not test positive. He was one of those contact tracing ones, and uh, yeah. Uh, so they got to figure that out because by Sunday. Because on their on their depth uh, chart, they don't have a backup fullback listed. Right, and and he had 35 snaps last week in uh, their uh, most recent win. So, and we've talked about how much they use that, how much, how much they use the fullback, much more than any other team in the league, really. Yeah. All right, uh, we've got some. We got Jerry talking about a variety of things that we are going to come back with in just a moment here on Mix Shots. Hey there, Cowboys fans! With Tide Cleaners at home pickup and delivery, cleaning your clothes has never been more convenient. Simply sign up at your local store, set out your dirty clothes, and one of our Tide Cleaners professionals will come directly to your home for a totally contactless experience. Your clean garments will be returned promptly the next scheduled delivery day, so skip the errand and enjoy life, not laundry. Visit TideCleaners.com or your local store to sign up for Tide Cleaners at home pickup and delivery today. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day, where we are all defined by one single thing, the star, where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. 
Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Grab some OtterBox gear and get ready for hanging with the boys. From rugged venture coolers to tough as nails elevation tumblers, we've got what you need to keep your game day drinks frosty and your football feast ice cold. And with cases, screen protectors, and power accessories, you can defend your phone and stay connected to every play. Gear up at OtterBox.com and amp up the fun of every Cowboys game. That's OtterBox.com. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears, okay. Let's play. Cream Soda and Dr. Pepper time. Pour it in a glass of ice. Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. The mixed shots. You can now support your beloved Cowboys from anywhere. Open up AT&T's Fan Zone feature inside the Cowboys app and record your personal cheer and referee signals. You'll receive a personalized mosaic and may show up on the AT&T Live FX video board during the game. Your own personal cheer and referee signals. Mickey, what is I your favorite? I can't wait to see what kind of celebrities we have. Yeah. That, that will do that. that. You know, I got a, I got a, a, a deal from the University of Missouri. Uh, they were, they were going to do some of the virtual, for a fundraiser, right? You needed to pay, I don't know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, and send your picture with some Missouri gear on, and they would make one of those uh, fake uh, fans in the stands with your face on it. Uh, I forgot to do it. I was going to do so it. So have you done that? No, I forgot. When you just how much, read how much this, does it cost? I think it was like twenty or thirty dollars. That would be cool if I, you know, you might have got on uh-huh. TV. But they got fans in the stands. No, so. what would be what would be cool is you get all of the you get some of the major stars, actors, and actresses, yeah. and and other, and man, like they had it in the championship game in the NBA. It'd be nice if we could see, you know, LeBron watching his favorite team, the Cowboys, play. You know, it's a lot of it's a lot of major fans out there that are Cowboy fans. I mean, very notable fans out there. So it'd be right. nice to see a couple of them show up. That'd be cool. Yep. All right, uh, Mickey, you uh, took a listen to uh, Jerry this morning as a regular Friday morning spot on the fan. And uh, some interesting comments came out of that this morning. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, they were uh, talking to him uh, about the division race, and they kind of laid out a scenario that if the Cowboys can sweep all three of their remaining NFC East games and then win one more game to get the six wins, they would have a good chance of uh, winning the division. And they wanted to know what Jerry had to think about this at this point when so many people are talking about, you know, not trying to win, get a get a better uh, uh, draft choice. And, you know, he went, he started off by saying, you know, I've seen so much in my time. Uh, and, he, and he basically, his point was, if, if you can get going, you can do a lot of damage with seven games left. And, and I thought it was very interesting on how he kind of explained himself and, and basically pointed out, this is no time to be tanking. But the path to get there like is daunting. That. But if we get there, we can get there with, his, uh, with a team that might be capable of uh, uh, doing more than we're giving credit for right today. Uh, I know that there's, there's just no way we hear about preparing for next year. We hear about doing some things like that. There's no way I can go there at this time. Uh, I'm interested in what we're going to do up here against Minnesota. If we do some good things on the field and take advantage of some things we're talking about right here, and I'm not going to be ready to talk next year for a long time. Hmm. And, and, you know, and one of the things when he said about preparing for uh, Minnesota, and, and, and he also uh, basically pointed out that, you know, he, he knows it hasn't showed up in wins, but he sees the team improving. And he said, in, and he said you naturally, with the amount of young guys we're playing, you would improve the more – reps you get in practice, the more snaps you get in games, getting Van Der Esch uh, back on the field. And he said, uh, he said I, I don't in any way give us a handicap 
going into that game. He thinks that uh, they can go up there and play a solid team and play well enough to win. So we'll see. And you know Jerry's always very uh, optimistic, but yeah, he, he basically pointed out, don't, don't come in here with this uh, tanking stuff. You know, we still got a long ways to go. Only one win behind the team that's leading the division. I, I kind of like his, you can kind of tell when, when Jerry um, is, has a little more false bravado versus when he's really focused. Right. And to me, that sounded like a very focused interview to where this is not where our mindset is, and we don't even want to think about that. Now, the key point is, he said, at this point, he said, we're right. not thinking about right. it. So that's good. That's good to hear because he shouldn't be. You know, when you talk about a businessman running a football team, <clears throat> I, I, would, I wouldn't necessarily run a team as a business, but when you start looking at personnel and how you can improve your team, to me, that is business when you start looking at personnel alone. And so when you start doing your quality control as far as what your team is doing, you can see uh, a little hope here, a little hope there. The way you pointed out Spags and you go over certain critical points in a ball game and we talk about, okay, if we could have done this better, then the, the outcome would be a little smoother. If we could have moved forward at this point, then the outcome would have been better, been more positive. That's the only way you can look at a team. Quality, quality control, see where you made your mistakes, and say, look, okay, if we're going to turn this around, these things have to change. Instead of this being a negative at this point, we're going to have to change this situation, whether it's a third down situation or whether you're talking offensively, improving your running game. Whatever, whatever uh, 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 segment of your team you want to improve, it has to be uh, really isolated on, and you have to really hone in on that. And I like the, the fact that that's what the Cowboys are doing, because that's what we do on the show. We take a particular uh, incident uh, in a ball game, we say, if this would have been done better, the, the outcome would have been different, or at least has a chance to be different. And that's all Jerry's doing. He's being optimistic about where he sees we can improve, and these are not far-fetched, optimistic uh, 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 sights that he has on the team. This is something that is very doable, and he feels that. That's why you had that sense of defiance in that interview that he had. Yeah, and, and he kind of started it off, and I don't know if we heard it all from the beginning, but he said, if you can get on the right path, and, and, and then his point was the path right now is dawning, <clears throat> but, um, and the other thing since you uh, mentioned the running game, uh, they, you know, they kind of came at him with Zeke. Are you disappointed that he hasn't done this, this, or this? Uh, and and he and he started off saying, "I think we're selling him short." Uh, he he said um, he said it, it, it's it, it's it's early. Uh, early when we could see there was some problems with our offense. It wasn't just him, you know, the offensive line, uh, you know, the turnovers. But I think he caught the guys by surprise, uh, and it's a quick cut here, uh, but he, I think he caught them by surprise when he said this about Zeke. He's our best football player. He's our best one. And having said that, uh, uh, we uh, just got to uh, have more chances to uh, expose him to the defense and we're going to do that so how about that now i'm assuming he meant the best player on the field right now i don't think he was i don't want anybody to say oh he's taking a shot at dak right but uh <laughs> his point was uh, you know and I, I guess we could argue you want to you want to argue for zach martin uh but other than that i don't know where else you would go uh uh, on that uh, discussion. Well, to me, if I'm if I'm Zeke, and I'm I'm I'm, block, I'm accustomed to three All Pros <laughs> and and a very solid offensive line, but then all of a sudden I look in the huddle and it's me, Mickey Spagnola, and Bill Jones sitting there. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, my chances of success are going to be t dwindled greatly. So to, to just dismiss the fact that he's gone through so much in regards to different 
personnel on the offensive line, you, you can't ignore that. I mean, come on. Let's, let's just be real about it. Any good running back, any good running back in history has always had a formidable offensive line. And right now, Zeke does not have that. It's just it's no, no knock on the guys that are playing. No knock at all. But they don't have the experience or the expertise of what from what uh, Zeke is used to running behind. Just yeah, that simple. And, and you know, and, and it's funny how excuses are made for the quarterback when the offensive line is not performing the way it should be. But then it's like, well, we should just rely on the running game. Well, if they can't pass block, does that assume that they can run block a lot better? And it, probably not. They are who they are. It's not. It's not their fault. They are who they are. That's right. That is it. I mean, <laughs> and, and so th- that affects the running game too. When you have guys missing blocks, and you've got new tight ends out there that um, you know have not. There have been times when the tight ends have been the problem too. In both instances, running Ooh, and man. pass blocking yeah. too. Uh, so uh, I understand what Jerry what Jerry was saying, but yeah, he was uh, he was pretty interesting today. So if anybody has an opportunity to, to you know listen to his 15 minutes, uh, it, it, it was it was pretty good. Let me throw this out there because I, I hear it from fans and, and and from media too. I was just on a radio show earlier today, and they're asking me. Um, why not more snaps for Tony Pollard? Give more carries to Tony Pollard. If Tony Pollard had, uh, let's reverse it, and let's say Tony Pollard got Ezekiel Elliott's snaps in a game and Zeke got Tony Pollard's uh, carries in a game, what what would Tony Pollard's yards per rushing attempt be? He's at 4.4 yards per attempt right now on the season. He's at, uh, where is he? He's 47 carries for 206 yards, while Zeke is at 3.8 yards per carry. And Zeke has a total of 150 150 carries for 572 yards, whatever. My point is there's a difference in the type carries that Zeke is getting compared to Pollard, right? Exactly. Because they're not putting Pollard in there on third and three or third and two and handing them the ball. Uh, He's not getting it on fourth and one when you just need one. Right to uh, to, to, or, or to get first, the first and ten down. when they're stacking the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and you know what? And he has the benefit of that change of pace. Right, they're used to. You get the defense kind of sitting in there tough and against a guy like Zeke. You kind of know where he's coming from. And then all of a sudden, Pollard gets a pitch out wide, and it's like, oh, he's fast. You know, you're used to Zeke pounding it in there. Uh, I just don't think people give Zeke credit for the dirty yards he has been getting this entire time. We talked about that. Uh, I think we talked about it last week, that uh, thunder and lightning that I yeah. enjoy watching. Pollard is definitely benefiting from the the hard, tough yards that uh, Zeke is getting. And let's let's just be fair here. Pollard to me, would be a great starting running back for any other team. Let's just be real about that. He's a great player, very diverse in what he does. He punt return, kick return. He does it all. He's very exciting. But to be a starting running back, I don't know if he would be able to do that here with the Cowboys on a consistent basis. He's one of those guys, I believe, would truly need a fullback. He would be like a a cook as far as I'm concerned. He would need that fullback. To me, Zeke doesn't need that fullback. That's why he's always taking that first huge contact anytime he carries the ball because there's no one in front of him. And once he gets through that hole, he's going to meet somebody and it's going to be man on man. And usually Zeke wins that battle. All right. Picks to click are coming up next. Uh, And do the Cowboys Beat the Vikings on Sunday on the non-frozen tundra inside. <laughs> what do they call that stadium up there? I knew you were going to ask me. Hang on. I'll All tell right, you. Mickey's going to look that up. We'll come <laughs> back with that US one. Bank, We've been there. U.S. <laughs> Bank Stadium. All right, U.S. Bank Stadium. It doesn't matter because yeah, we we're not going to be there. Us for some reason. Well, you know what I mean? It just doesn't that's sound right. the same. No. All right, we're headed to... Uh, a break, and then we got our picks to click when we come back in a moment. We're back with a taste. 
tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears, okay. Let's play. Cream Soda and Dr. Pepper time. Pour it in a glass of mine. Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. Dear, it's 1908. Don't you think we should get electricity? Hmm, and stop using candles to see at night. It's just electricity lights up the room fast. It's more reliable than candles blowing out, and people seem to love it nationwide. Well, candles are... Dear, did you just run into the wall? Nope. May I have a new candle, please? Historically, switching to new technology is a no-brainer. Today, it's AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure, and nationwide. Switch to AT&T 5G. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan. May not be in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. There's nothing as unique as our eyes, which is why Essilor pioneers ways to make lenses as unique as you. Verilux for super sharp vision, Essential Blue for protection, and Crizol for freedom from glare. Three cutting edge solutions in a single unique lens. So whatever your needs, insist on Essilor. Visit your local Essilor experts and find the perfect lens for you. See more, do more, Essilor. To mix shots. The Cowboys will be back at home at AT&T Stadium, talking about stadiums, on Thanksgiving Day to take on the Washington football team. Tickets starting at $89 are on sale now. Get yours today at DallasCowboys.com slash tickets. All right, our last segment here of the week, getting you set for the Cowboys and the Vikings. And by the way, uh, yesterday we were talking about great players in Vikings history. I did a little bit of research. Here are your Hall of Fame players for the Minnesota Vikings. Fran Tarkenton, Alan Page, Paul Krause, Ron Yeri, Mick Tinglehoff, Carl Eller, Chris Carter, Randall McDaniel, John Randall, Chris Dolman, and, uh, you, of course, you got the head coach, Bud Grant, a GM, Jim Finks. I uh, did a little talkback interview with a reporter from Minneapolis yesterday. He threw in Randy Moss and Adrian Peterson as great players in Vikings history. So you hear that list. And who's the greatest player in Vikings history? Who's the greatest? Yep. Yeah. In yeah, Tarkin. Opinion? You thought you thought Tarkington yesterday, didn't you? I, I, I mentioned Tarkington, but I'm going to go with a defensive man. I'm going with Alan Page. I like Alan Page too. I'm going with Alan Page. He was a, he was just a straight up beast. <laughs> I'm sorry. So my my uh, <laughs> my research my research came up with the six numbers they retired. The six players numbers they retired. Okay. Fran Tarkington, number ten. Mick Tinglehoff, fifty three. Jim Marshall, 70. Corey Stringer, 77. Chris Carter, 80. And then Alan Page, 88. Those are their retired numbers. No Chuck Foreman? I was surprised by that. What's that? He said no Chuck Foreman. Yeah. <laughs> that was the guy I no mentioned Chuck yesterday. Foreman. Wow, that's I very thought surprising. Chuck Foreman was awfully good. So there you go. We got two votes for Alan Page. And Mickey, who are you voting yeah, for? Yeah, Alan Page for sure. Okay. All right. I didn't realize he was the NFL MVP one year. So that's what sold it for me. That's crazy. MVP at that, at that time. They, they at at that position. At yeah. That much. yeah. That's good stuff. Purple people eaters. All right. Okay, wait a second. Chris Beam, our producer, we're like, I'm looking at him on our WebEx feed, and he's shaking his head. He, he doesn't like our pick. He didn't like Alan Page. All right. All right, Chris. Who does he like? Uh, Adrian Chris, Peterson. Chris. Chris, Chris Not he's got Adrian Peterson. We didn't Peterson. even talk about him yesterday. His name didn't even come up. What, what's, 
No doubt. <laughs> I got to give him credit on that one. I do you, have to give him credit on that one. Yeah, so I, you're I, changing your vote from Alan Page to Adrian Peterson? I am not changing my vote, but God, Adrian Peterson and, and a Texas kid too? Uh, no. That that gives yeah. him my... An Oklahoma Sooner at that? My and I, and and an I still, Oklahoma Sooner. Yeah. That's, that's my honorable mention. Sorry. But I, I, okay. can't get out, I can't give up Alan Page. There you go. All right. So let's talk about the current Vikings. And by the way, they've got a player on injured reserve this year who I think is eventually going to be in their ring of honor. And that is their defensive end, Daniil Hunter. As long as he comes back from this injury, I think he is that good. But he's not playing on Sunday. What's his history? Well, he, he, uh, in his first five years, five oh, years no, in I mean, the league. Where did he come from? What school? LSU. Oh. In fact, he's the guy. He's the guy I thought the Cowboys should have drafted in twenty. What year did Randy Gregory come out? Twenty. He, he lasted to the third round. Twenty. It was he only either. had like three sacks. He only had like three sacks in college at LSU. But he was twenty years old coming out. I was so enamored with him coming into the draft that year. I said Cowboys need to take this guy in the first round. And um, it, but he was a late bloomer type, and so uh, Marinelli didn't like him. He, they wanted someone who can produce immediately, you know, and so they took Randy Gregory in the second round. Um, and but anyway, he's got over 50 sacks his first five years in the league, and he's only 25, 26 years old. Wow. I mean, he's going to play another 10 years, assuming this injury isn't debilitating. Anyway, all right. So this Vikings team. Let's start with you, Everson. Your thoughts on a pick to click and a winner on Sunday. Who do you got? Well, my pick to click, first I have to set up the situation. The Cowboys, in order to be successful, they're going to have to play first down very well. We know it's going to be running. They may come out with some tricks with play action early on. But when the game, as it progresses... Minnesota is going to try and gas you on first down with uh, Delvin Cook. In order for us to be successful, we have to stop that. And we're going to have to stop that with our linebackers. So as much as we talk about a pick to click, I got three picks to click. (laughs) And I'm looking at our entire linebacker uh, squad. Jalen, Sean Lee, and Layton. If we're going to be successful, they have to have a hell of a game. I'm not just talking about stopping the run. I'm talking about shutting down that tight end because when they put that ball ball in in Cook's belly and they bring it out, they're going to be looking for Kyle Rudolph. And that's another opportunity for our linebackers to make a difference in this game. I look for us to win. Best case scenario, I always say this, best case scenario, things work out well, Cowboys 27-20. 27-20. Yes, All right. Very good. Opening up that offense. Mickey, what are you thinking? Uh, as my, <laughs> my pick to click, I'm going to go with a little bit of a short history here. Because uh, if you remember when Andy Dalton came into the game against the Giants, who did he hook up with for those big drives? One Michael Gallup. Michael Gallup. And he's been a little quiet lately, so watch out for Michael Gallup because this offense – has to get rolling. The Vikings have been scoring points. Uh, They only scored 19 against the Bears. I get it. But uh, they've been scoring quite a few points uh, along the way. And if you look at it, that was the fewest, uh, the the second fewest points they scored all season. They only scored 11 when they lost to the Colts, uh, 28-11. But they had 34, 30, 31, 26, 23, 28, 34. So the Cowboys offense has to function much better than it has since, uh, gosh, we can go all the way back to the the game they beat the Giants, (laughs) right? The Giants game. When they scored 37 (laughs) points. So my guy is going to be Michael Gallup. He's going he's gonna to hurt this secondary uh, that has struggled some, somewhat against the pass. And, I, that's why and, I almost picked Cooper, Spags. Yeah. And, and I, I'm then surprised for, you went with Gallup. I uh, thought you'd go with Cooper. And then for my pick, uh, I swore that I wouldn't pick the Cowboys again to win until they won. 
and they haven't won yet, right? Until they won twice. You said yeah, until twice. they won yeah, twice. Yeah, twice. twice. <laughs> You're right. So this is this will be the key one because if they can win this one and then they have a chance to beat Washington, then I guess I have to pick them against Baltimore, right? Then you, yeah, you pick them against the Ravens then. Uh, but I think twenty. <laughs> no fair looking ahead. No fair looking ahead. I think ahead, uh, right Vikings twenty four twenty one in this one. Mm. Vikings 24-21. All right. And I'm going with I'm going to go ahead and go with the Cowboys victory. All right. They're going to be a half game out of first place by Sunday night because the Eagles are going to lose to Baker Mayfield and the Browns. And uh, then I'll even I'll take it a step further because uh, because my prediction is going to be the Cowboys are going to be in first place by the end of Thanksgiving weekend. How's that? Okay? That's where I'm going with this. And uh, so I'll, I'll go tight game. Uh, let's go. Let's have uh, Zerline win it on a field goal 24-23. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and uh, Sean Lee is my pick to click. If they play him, he'll be the pick to click. <laughs> Let me go down the hallway and tell, tell Mike, you, you need to play Sean Lee. <laughs> And by, the way, and by the way, I'm going against my little philosophy that the more you win in this league, the closer you are to losing. They've won their three straight, right? So the odds are they're about mm-hmm. to lose one. That's my point, too. There you go, Spags. And the Cowboys have lost their four straight, yeah, and so yeah. they are closer to winning. We are due. Something's going to Something's going to land in their lap. <laughs> All right. Very good. All right. That does it for uh, Mixed Shots for another week. Enjoy the game on Sunday, and we will be back with you on Monday afternoon at 1.30 to talk about this Cowboys victory over the Vikings. (laughs) Yeah, go Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?